we fight to gain what we cannot take with us. It's in our nature. Hello there. Sorry from 17 once again. This is my Assassin's Creed Syndicate 100% sequence walkthrough. This is uh, sequence one. It's called A Spanner in the Works. So I'm doing something here that I said I probably never would ever do. But in the spirit of diversification, uh, I'm doing it guys. I am going to actually cover an Assassin's Creed. And anybody who knows my channel, or who is familiar with any of the stuff I've made before, any of the opinions, any of the sentiments that I've shared on various videos over the years, they will know that uh, I used to love Assassin's Creed up until Assassin's Creed 2. And then they essentially turned it into those women from the new Mad Max where they're in those chairs being breastfed, like egregiously. That's all Ubisoft seemed to have done. And uh, I fell out of love with the series, I got really mad, and uh, I haven't really ever gone back in a way that's ever truly reflected fun or interest. Uh, outside of one game, which was Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which I think was a, a really interesting spin which took the series in a few different directions, a la the sailing and the entire emphasis on building a crew to sail with and stuff. And I thought that was fantastic. However, um, Unity was, was interesting, but it had a lot of flaws. And then we have, you know, a year later, we have Syndicate, which is this culmination of all the elements coming together. And the first thing you're going to see here is the... In they say it's, it's improved combat, but it's kind of just a little bit more involved. And I haven't been able to tell whether or not it's improved yet, because I haven't done enough of it, but it feels at times like the enemies attack too slow, and then when they do attack, they attack too fast sometimes. So, getting used to it is taking a while, and you're going to see me take a hit coming up, because I get hit really quick. Whenever they guard like that, they immediately counter really quickly, because you need to break their guard with A instead of attacking. So if you do attack, get ready to press B and counter. And uh, I've been playing a lot of Uncharted, so I keep pressing Y and taking hits. But you're going to see pretty much me growing with the game as I play it. Because I'm doing an interesting thing with this particular walkthrough. Normally I would beat the entire game and then I would start again and I would record it. But because I want to try and get this out of the way quite quickly, and I'm not saying that in a negative way, I'm just saying that in, in like less than five days Halo 5 comes out, which is probably going to be much more down you know, my, my avenue of things to cover because it's going to be pretty challenging on its hardest difficulty. And Assassin's Creed doesn't have any difficulties. And then there's all the other projects that are running at the moment that I'm trying to get through, the Dark Souls 3 stuff, the Uncharted stuff. I really need to, to make progress on this. And then, you know, barely a week or two after that, you've got things like Rise of the Tomb Raider and Fallout 4, where Fallout 4 is going to be massive. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening. It's probably the busiest I've been in a very long time. So, uh, what I'm doing is, I'm beating the level my first time. I'm, you know, listening to the cutscenes, I'm having fun with it. And then once I'm done, I replay it and I record. And then I go for a more focused, direct route to get through the level and that's what you're going to be seeing and I think it's going to do a few things it's going to add a flair of shall we say innocence to the game and it's also going to have a little bit more topical commentary because when I play an entire game and I come back and I share my thoughts a lot of the minutia and some of the nuances are lost you know between moments to moments because it's been a while since I played that particular section so because this is going to be so fresh in my mind it's going to have almost a volatile nature to some of my sentiments I'm going to share because I might be frustrated, I might be loving it, it might be a culmination of, of everything, who knows? I've never really done it like this so it's always fun to, to mix it up every so often and that's what this is going to be. And another great reason for doing it this way is when I'm recording it I can then stop it, I can then edit it and then I can commentate it and all that time my Elgato's having a break so it might not fuck up like it normally does because it's a piece of massive shit, do not buy it. But this is the first level the first thing I need to convey immediately to people, if you're thinking like I was thinking, do not tailor Evie and Jacob differently because you're going to be forced to use them. I thought you could, you know, pick your character and have a lot of choice in between missions, but so far I've been forced to use Jacob when I wanted to use Evie and vice versa. So I made the mistake of making this guy my brawler, my pugilist. I gave him attack skills so that his stealth was really crappy. And the stealth in this game is really crappy. And Eve, I gave all the stealth stuff. So she's a fucking ninja, and they're forcing me to do stealth with Jacob. And I ended up having a, a nightmare on sequence four, 
uh, which hopefully I'm going to help you avoid because I just mapped my characters out in a different way. And I'm not saying that the game is, you know, unrealistically challenging. I'm just saying that for a stealth mechanic that works so poorly, you want all the advantages you can get. And my advice is to literally focus on getting those stealth upgrades for both characters because the easier the stealth is, the better. Because it just doesn't work. It doesn't, guys. Open world, bad AI, stealth mechanic equals fail. It always does. Always has, always will. Until somebody figures it out. And the first game that figured it out for me, Metal Gear Solid. And even then, there are instances where that AI is either wickedly stupid or shouldn't have spotted you. But I'm not going to talk about that because that's not this game. However, the AI in this game can like has no blind spots in the vision, sees you when you're behind cover because the cover system isn't up to the fucking, you know, purpose it should be to actually work. And it's just the movement, man, the movement in these games. There's a part of me as an animator, because I've done it, I was taught it at university, I was never very good at it, but I appreciate it. Wonderful animations on things. However, when animation takes priority over mechanical movement, it gets really annoying. And making tiny movements in Assassin's Creed can literally feel like you're trying to move a wardrobe on yourself. And anyone who's played these games knows exactly what I'm talking about. And unfortunately, all of that is still here. It's just highlighted in different ways. And the first way that they've tried to change to make it work better is by altering the controls. Now when you hold the trigger, you will go straight forward. You won't go up, you won't go down. If you hold B, you will climb downwards or you will go downwards when you're running forward. If you hold A, you will go up. There are times when these rules do not strictly abide to certain circumstances and they fail wonderfully and it's hilarious, but for the most, if you can get used to that, you'll have a great advantage in this game. However, I've played every Assassin's Creed, I might not have liked them all, but I've played them all, so I'm having troubles when I'm on an edge and I'm trying to jump off it and normally you would just press, you know, holding the right trigger, you would tap it and he would jump forward, well now he kind of doesn't. So he sat there like a tit and I'm like, move you dickhead, come on! And you've, you've got to get it in your mind that B is down, A is up, and holding the trigger with nothing going forward is just parallel to where you are, it's just, you know, literally the same path you're on. And uh, that right there is me quick throwing the daggers. They kick, they kill really quickly. They throw really fast. Really impressed with the daggers. However, it's not as quiet as you would think it would be, because for some reason, you'll throw a dagger at a dude in a crowded, you know, marketplace, and everybody knows you did it, even though you were on a roof and nobody saw you. Once again, AI on this game completely horrendous. And you might be thinking, well, you just suck, Chris. You know, you'll get better. You'll understand the AI, and it'll make sense. It's nothing to do with that, dude. It really isn't. You know, I've played some of the strictest AI on the hardest difficulty on stealth games, and it's always made a sense. There's always been some kind of sense. This game, somebody saw me through a wall. I stealth took down a guy. I saw an indicator on the other side of a brick wall that was about like 12 feet high. It went red, and a guy jumped up, climbed over, and knew I was coming. The only way he could have known is if he heard me, and I did a stealth takedown. Like, it just... I sent a really angry tweet earlier because of that, like straight up broken, awful, miserable. But I'm going to try my best, guys, to not dwell on the problems that this series has because I think it's obvious. And you've either been a player who's come to accept it and just doesn't even notice it anymore, or you stopped playing like I do because it gets so frustrating you want to literally snap the disc. But here is a little introduction to free running downwards. And when you hit this area here, you're going to get your objective screen and you're going to see whether or not you hit those objectives. So for this one, um, I don't think there was anything specific that you had to do. So that's pretty cool. But thank you for watching, folks. And I hope you enjoy something a little different, a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, not that this is, you know, really going to stretch that comfort zone because these games practically play themselves, but there are going to be some tricky objectives coming up and I'm hopefully going to show you some fun ways of doing them. And if nothing, it's a bit of Assassin's Creed on a channel that literally has never had it. So as always, you take care now.